Booster 5 was released on October 17, 1999. This set introduced Yu-Gi-Oh's first mill cards, Needleworm and Morphing Jar. Milling, or deck out, is a concept in several trading card games where if a player can no longer draw a card from their deck, they lose the game. However, Yu-Gi-Oh during this time had no such rule, and when a player could no longer draw a card, whichever player had the most life points was declared the winner. This meant that mill couldn't be a viable strategy because it was too difficult managing milling the opponent's deck and maintaining more life points over the course of the game. Furthermore, on November 18th, Volume 6 was released and would once again shift Yu-Gi-Oh's landscape. Volume 6 introduced two of Yu-Gi-Oh's most infamous searchers, Sangen and Witch of the Black Forest. When sent to the graveyard, both monsters were capable of searching for other monsters from the deck and adding them to the hand. Sangen searched monsters with 1500 or less attack, and Witch was similar, but for monsters with 1500 or less defense. Since Sangen and Witch could also search each other, this made it possible to access any monster in the deck at nearly any time. What's baffling, however, is that the first iterations of these cards were even more powerful because they triggered from being sent to the graveyard from anywhere, not just from the field like most players remember. This means they could be comboed with a card such as Graceful Charity, which usually is a 3 for 3 and actually plays plus in terms of card advantage, turning the downside of Graceful Charity into upside. As a result, Sangen and Witch became immediate staples in every deck, because decks only got better by playing them. This also made Exodia a much more viable strategy since the consistency skyrocketed. And if that weren't enough, Volume 6 also introduced the game's first ever counter trap, Solemn Judgment, which by paying half of your life points could be used in response to the summon or activation of another card to negate its effects and destroy it. Initially, players weren't too keen on paying half of their life points to negate a single card, but as the game progressed, it became more apparent how little life points mattered in the history of the OCG. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've said it plenty of times on this series, but this time it might be for real. This truly looks like the end of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, we have played many a formats uh, throughout YouTube's history, but this has to be just on paper, one of the most disgusting degenerate things imaginable. If Konami's grand plan was to make Exodia as powerful in the real game as it is in the anime, they succeeded because this is by far and away one of the best decks in Yu-Gi-Oh's history, bar none. I, I cannot possibly fathom how this was legal in any form and buckle up because we're going to be here for a while. So why is this the case? Well, first of all, we have the Exodia pieces, which are not limited to one, by the way, which is insane to me, which you would think you wouldn't want to play more than one of each piece, but there isn't enough cards to really fill in the gap of what else you would want to play. And so playing two copies of each at least assures that, you know, if your opponent is playing any random garbage to try to out Exodia, you can at least recover to an extent. But the fact that the release of Sengen and Witch of the Black Forest effectively made it the freest way imaginable to search Exodia is just baffling. Now, a lot of people might remember from like the old video games that like, yeah, of course, Witch and Sangen were always ways to search Exodia pieces. And through like Monster Reborn and Premature Burial and Call of the Haunted, we'd resurrect such cards, they'd get popped again, you add the next piece until you finally have all of them. Let's pair that with the fact that these cards are at three, and the fact that we are able to pitch them for graceful charity or even tribute to the doomed, because why not, uh, to search any Exodia piece that we might need. So the fact that they don't trigger from going from field to grave, but from going to grave in general, means that graceful charity now turns into a plus two any single time you have two of these in your hand. And it just gets out of control really fast. Like fast enough to the point that you have to think we're what, like, five, six months into Yu-Gi-Oh's history at this point, and we're seeing what is effectively like a solitaire just FTK deck that basically has no equal. It's insane. It is absolutely ridiculous. And the only other deck that people were even playing at this point to try and counteract this was this. Like, obviously, Sangen and Witch of the Black Forest can slot their way into any strategy, but why would you bother playing a deck like this when you could easily just play it in Exodia and make your Exodia win condition almost free. I wouldn't be surprised that by the end of this episode, if I'm able to assemble Exodia without even Joseph taking a single turn, because with three Graceful Charity, three Pot of Greed, not to mention we have all the ways to like get these cards into the graveyard, like Tribute to the Doomed and such, the other decks playing way more draw power and way more just efficient tools to build around an Exodia deck. What is this deck doing? Best case scenario, if that deck has no defense, I'm talking no Swords of Revealing Light or anything, you're going to go like Graceful Charity, pitch two Summon Skulls, reboot 
reborn both of them, summon like a Gemini elf and like, what, maybe like change of heart or like do something like, like it's, it, there's like no way for a deck to produce 8,000 damage without the stars aligning that you're actually able to do that consistently. It's kind of unfortunate too, because like it overshadows the fact that like Summon Skull and Gemini Elf both have under 1500 defense, which means which of the Black Forest can search both of them. I guess Mechanical Chaser does too, if I'm looking at it that way. And since Sangan can get into Witch, you have now the ability to toolbox for any single card in your deck with either one of these cards. But who cares about that when you're just summoning Exodia? The, the thing is, it's like the only reason this deck wasn't unbelievably just rampant was because there were actual limitations on how you could acquire the cards. Think back when we talked about it in the intros of prior videos, Exodia's head was exclusive to the premium pack from the 2000 national tournament at the Tokyo Dome. Two of these pieces, I believe were in like strategy guides for the video game. So they were kind of hard to acquire. No one's really going to buy multiple strategy guides for multiple pieces of Exodia. You'd probably try to trade with someone else who maybe bought that themselves. And two of the other pieces, I believe came from like the corset that's either the volume set or the booster series. So yeah, two of the pieces were easy to acquire, but good luck getting the other three, especially multiple quantities. It's almost like the show. It's almost like the rare hunter who played almost this exact deck trying to assemble Exodia as fast as humanly possible. This is going to be a disaster. This is going to be an absolute clusterfuck of an episode. And boy, can I out wait to see Joseph's face when we resolve Exodia turn one three times in a row. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Joseph, every time we think that we're going to set land speed records for how fast these episodes are, uh, we run into the next episode, and I, I definitively think this will be maybe one of the fastest episodes you and I have ever recorded together. <laughs> I'm super excited. <laughs> one of these days, we're going to miss ad roll. That's the that's the fingers crossed type that's situation. That's the actual goal. That's <laughs> yeah. the actual goal. We need it to be memeing just enough, uh, so enough people watch it that if we do miss ad roll, it's going to be irrelevant. Uh, so I rolled a die. I don't know if you're going to roll die. It's I up did. to you, buddy. Oh, you did. You did. You're going to get cooked. I rolled a six. This is terrible for our uh, our PB. <laughs> All right. Let's I was going to say, we're uh, any percent, any percent. All right. You get to go first? I guess I go first. first second? This, this, uh, from here on out. <laughs> why? Buddy, why don't you let me go first? What's uh, the worst I'm that good. could happen? <laughs> Do we draw for turn yet? <laughs> you don't. Not yet. It's cool. We're getting it's close, cool. though. We are getting close. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, man, you might be, just be dead already. All right, Graceful Charity. No response. <laughs> PB, PB, PB. I'm going to pitch Witch of the Black Forest and Sangan. And guess what, buddy? Both of these cards trigger during this time because they just have to be sent to the graveyard. Oh, so that's what we're going to do. Damn, our PB is getting ruined by the fact that Dueling Book is slowing us down. Okay, so with our Sangan and Witch of the Black Forest, which I cannot believe I get to actually plus two off of Graceful Charity. Uh, we're going to add some Exodia pieces to our hand. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to fire Pot of Greed, and we're going to draw a couple more cards. Oh, look, how convenient. That's really interesting. Uh, then we're going to... Damn, there's still no hand size limit either. I could just sit on this. This is sick. Uh, I'm just going to set a card. I'm going to set a card. And you know what? I'm just I'm just going to pass it to you. Go ahead, buddy. Stand by main. That set card's moth. Uh, oh, flip summon Man Eater Bug. I'll pop them off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will add the right arm of the forbidden one. And Joseph, you absolute buffoon. Oh. I have assembled all five pieces. I made one move. I made one move. How's that PB looking? It's it's looking really rough. Okay, if I go second, <laughs> oh man, oh this hand is pretty. Oh, come on! <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna pitch Witch and Sangan and trigger their respective effects, and I will add to my hand two pieces of Exodia. <laughs> and Joseph, oh, I didn't even again. play the fucking game. I didn't even get to draw a card. Oh my god! You made one move! You played one card! Oh my god! Do you want to do game three? <laughs> yeah, I'm down. <laughs> You buddy, what what are you gonna pick? I'll I'll let you. Uh, oh sorry, I'll hit rock. I'll 
I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think in the interest of speed running, I'll pick second. <laughs> You're going to let me go first again? You can't okay. open Graceful Charity three games in a row. Ah! Yeah, clearly not. All right, we're going to draw three cards and discard two copies of Witch of the Black Forest and trigger I'm, I'm their... I'm going to lose my mind. I'm gonna, it's over. <laughs> we'll add this. We'll add this. Whatever. Who cares? Because you know why? Who cares? We have Pot of Greed. We'll draw some cards. We'll just draw what we need anyway. And you know what? I think that's so confident that I'll just draw three more cards while I'm at it too. And um, Joseph, I can't believe I'm going to say this. You actually might get to play the game. Oh, it's incredible. Truly. Discard your cards for uh, Graceful. I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to get rid of... Uh, I'm going to get rid of this trap hole and this uh, s uh this duplicate exodia head <sighs> why not uh that wouldn't reveal any information about my hand in the slightest uh i'm just gonna set one i'm just gonna yeah go <laughs> i know that's moth i know it's moth there's nothing i can do is about it, it moth there's nothing i can do about it i don't have any way to beat it so let's just see the moth please <laughs> Sure, yeah. it's the bomb. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, go off. Uh, we'll get graceful. Yeah, don't we'll get don't graceful. hurt yourself thinking. Oh, no, I won't. Don't worry. Uh, we'll graceful. Yeah, yeah. We'll draw three. Uh, I still don't have it. Oh, That's incredible. I'll pitch Sangan and uh, I guess tribute to the doomed. Mm -hmm. I don't think I need those. We'll trigger Sangan. I'll get a piece. Mm hmm. Uh, and then I will set one, and uh, you know what? I'll activate Swords Revealing it's Life fucking, to make it harder. It's Moth again. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just fucking <laughs> Moth again. Go. What do you mean, buddy? Oh I don't know what you're God. worried about. <laughs> Everything's fine, Joseph. Everything's fine. I need to actually find the last piece is the thing. We're going to pitch... Oh, God. What do we pitch? Uh, I'm going to pitch Dark Hole Change of Heart. Uh, yeah, we'll pitch Change of Heart. Why not? Uh, we'll Pot of Greed. Let's draw a few more cards. Uh, we'll Pot of Greed again. We'll draw some more cards. And uh, we still don't have it. Bad. Damn, that sucks. Uh, I will just set one. Oh, damn, I'm misplaying. I realized what I could have done. Okay, go ahead. Okay, we. I think I actually am favored here. Uh, flip Summon, Man Eater Bug. We'll target the face down. I'll activate Sankin. <laughs> and we will add the final piece of Exodia the Forbidden. You having fun over there? <laughs> Time. That is seven minutes of raw footage. I think that's a. I think that's a world record for. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Am I right? How was this allowed? How? I. <laughs> we've Joseph. You and I have been around this game for a long time. We've literally played through the entire history of the TCG. I think this is worse than almost anything we've ever experienced. I, I'm sorry. This is unbelievable. The, and it's it. This isn't even full power. It gets worse than this. <laughs> the only thing that even comes close. Last will magical scientist. At least you took actions. You won a game after activating <laughs> one card. This one card. This isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. This isn't even solitaire. This is no. this is go. Fish. We'll get to solitaire. We'll get to solitaire. Don't worry. I think it's incredible to think that the only thing that was really holding people back from playing Yu-Gi-Oh like this was like the availability of the individual cards, yep. right? Like yep. Exodia's head was only available as like a premium pack. The other four pieces, like I think two of them may have been locked behind like video games or like video game, like uh, strategy guides. And the other two, I think were included in like regular uh, core sets at the time. And like, obviously the distribution methods for cards at the time weren't like what they are today because the economics of this game hadn't really like propped itself out, like up in such a way that like you could just feasibly get these cards so easily. There's like no counterplay to this, like at all. I don't even know, like how would you have to fight back against this? You would have to like have your own graceful charities pitch like a bunch of guys and then like I don't have swords and then just like kill me before I'm able to assemble the Exodia pieces. Well, perhaps next time we will see the evolution of how people tried to beat absolutely obscene strategy.
So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoy. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout to Shout1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play Medolce, Moto, Cameron L. Smith, Phoenix the Immortal, Pony Stark, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, Little Fade Leaf, Draconic, Dylan Rare Hunter, JW11860, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Flannel Daddy, Chrono the Branded Enjoyer, Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, Uncle Brian of Stardust, Power Rave, but without a stupidly long name that barely makes any sense and is annoying to read out loud, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Wonder Waffle, MBT Cancel Bio Community soon, Cancel Bio Committee soon, Cancel Bio Players soon, Nicholas Carpenter, Corvain, Calvin Tempest, RIP Akira Toriyama, Daniel Howell, and Life Keeps Using Solemn Judgment.